everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Union Station was the scene of the third annual Sly's Rock the Block Party on Saturday, August 16th. This free, family-friendly event celebrated another successful summer of Mayor's Night's programs. Activities included carnival games and bounce houses, one-on-one -on -one basketball and video game tournaments, plus free food for the first 4,000 people. This is the third Rock the Block, and it's getting bigger and better every year. And the reason it's getting bigger and better every year is because we have some great partners. But before I talk about them, I want to talk about you, and I want to talk about the kids in this city. The over 10,000 kids that have participated in basketball, volleyball, soccer, Club KC, Arts Tech, going to movies at the library this summer. Every one of them had a good time. They had a safe place to go and a safe place to be and they got to hang out with their friends which is what every young person wants to do. I did when I was growing up, you did when you were growing up, that's what we want to do. They get to do it too. After 8 p.m. the event transitioned to the final night of Club KC for middle and high school students. Recently the My Brother's Keeper listening session was held at the Kaufman Foundation Conference Center. The event brought together several civic organizations, which worked to address the challenges facing young men of color in Kansas City. I remind the stories that we hear of uh, young men and boys of color who have written to us uh, and talked to us at these listening sessions who are just so excited about what the president is doing and happy that this acknowledgement is being raised in the public uh, sphere uh, across this country. That's why I'm excited uh, to participate and work uh, where I do right now. Our environment, you know, sometimes you're, 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 you're stuck in this world that you really can't get out. Like, I really didn't know too much about our South before 2006. I didn't know what 100th Street was. You know, I, I'm like, man, I'm out of town. What is, where are we going, T? You know, I'm like, you know, because I was stuck on 27th Street. That was my, that was my world. I didn't think of nothing else outside 27th Street. I got nine liquor stores within an eight block radius. I'm good. You know, we can go, grab some clothes from cousin Big Pete house. He got, he got a couple old shoes we can slide on, you know, so I'm just kind of stuck in that atmosphere to where I don't think any greater, you know, so I would say our biggest challenge is kind of, kind of getting these youth to expand their, their, their minds. The My Brother's Keeper listening session was hosted by Aim for Peace, a City of Kansas City Health Department violence prevention program. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Fall is just around the corner and September promises to be a busy month at Bartle Hall with charity events, festivals, and entertainment. Get ready to party. Fiesta Hispania is taking over Barney Alice Plaza for the 29th year. This event recognizes the significant role and contribution Hispanics have played in the development of the United States. With an average overall attendance of more than 30,000 people, Fiesta Hispania is now the largest free admission public Hispanic event in the metro area and the Midwest. Grammy award-winning gospel greats Fred Hammond and Donnie McClurkin take the stage at the Music Hall on September 19th as part of the Festival of Praise 2014 tour. Also, the stage production of Mrs. Independent, a play featuring Robin Givens, Christopher William, and Dottie Peoples, raises its curtain at the Music Hall on October 3rd through 4th. What happens when a $250,000 a year lawyer wife clashes with her $40,000 a year auto mechanic husband who believes that the man is the head of the house? Find out in this play based on a true story. Tickets for both events are available at Ticketmaster.com or at the Municipal Auditorium box office. This year's Adorn Style Show and Brunch on Saturday, September 20th in the Convention Center's Grand Ballroom promises to be bigger and better than ever. Guests will discover the latest fashion trends presented by professional runway models, enjoy creatively designed tablescapes, and a delicious brunch as well as experience unique shopping at the marketplace of exclusive boutiques and local merchants. For ticket information, go to harvestball.org. To learn about even more events, as well as ticket information, 
visit caseyconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. I'm Channel 2's Chris Hernandez. The results are in, and we're calling it the Big 20. The Citizen Satisfaction Survey shows a 20 percentage point jump in the citizen satisfaction with the image of their city. It's a blindfold kickback type of a game called the Kansas City Shuffle. Citizen satisfaction with the overall image of the city has jumped from 36% to 56% over the past four years. That is the fastest increase we've ever seen in the category, and it's now the highest level ever recorded for this particular statistic. We hear from residents all the time, every day, all day long, as they give us feedback about what they like and what they don't like about our performance. Again, the statistic is a 20-point jump over four years in the satisfaction of city residents with the overall image of the city. The parade of signs here, these are actual quotes from residents over the past couple of years. These residents who have seen improvements in customer service, who've written or tweeted to say thanks or deliver a pat on the back to a city worker. makes me proud to live here. It's a great city and uh, we're lucky and you guys are doing a great job. Just a great job. That really helps us when we have uh, people acknowledge uh, the good work we do and that's, uh, that's all I try to do every day with everyone. You can check out the full report online or to see some pictures from the big celebration we held, just check out this hashtag, KCBig20. For Channel 2, I'm Chris Hernandez. Everybody for coming for the road opening here, Shoal Creek Parkway, as it extends from Harrison over to Woodland. This is a last piece of a critical link on east-west movement up here in the Northland. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody who helped make this possible. The community that's been asking for it, the council members who funded it, the TIF that funded the section to the west of us, and the school district for. Um, their support on this project and we feel that this is going to be a critical link to help improve the safety of the traveling public and especially the safety of our young drivers who are going to Staley High School. Looking into the future, we've got one of, one of the best high schools, not just in the Northland, but I, I think uh, in the state, in the region, in the nation, in, in Staley. And uh, to the uh, west we're going to have at some point in time a new high school in the R3 school district probably built along 108th. Uh, I, I can imagine the rivalry that you know 10, 15, 20 years from now that these two high schools might have and the traveling on Show Creek Parkway in 108th as uh, high school students drive to and from the football stadiums and have their rallies uh, uh, celebrating the uh, uh, their schools. So uh, I want to thank everyone. Uh, this is this was on my bucket list. I've got a little less than a year in office, and as Sherry knows, uh, I wanted to make sure this got open before I left office, and I we really actually wanted it open before school started this 
this term so we succeeded on both thank you very much thank you for all the people who worked on this and, and made that timetable possible uh, we're glad to be here today uh, Casey Parks and Recreation uh, the park board is known for the park and boulevard system in this city it's the foundation of our city uh, primarily been south of the river designed by George Kessler back after the turn of the century we have 130 miles of parks and boulevards in the city parkways in our city and now with this section of a half a mile from where we are at Harrison on the Woodland we're up to about 13 miles so 10 percent of the system now is north of the river and it's bit by bit piece by piece it's coming together and we're glad to have the parkway system developed in the in the Northland uh, the sidewalks of course are important uh, if you notice there's a five foot on this side a ten foot on that side which means it's a multi-use trail on the north side that's kind of the standard we work with right now you see the bike lanes which are important too so it's not only for cars and buses and trucks not a lot of trucks hopefully but at least buses and cars and then uh, the bike pad accommodations are very important that too as far as having uh, a good you know multi-use traffic associated with it so that'll happen the trees will be planted it looks like the landscape is going to go in yet this fall and so that'll start to green things up and uh, we're looking forward to it we just want to say thank you uh, to Councilman Ford, to the city, to the Parks Department for uh, partnering with us to make sure that we have uh, a beautiful roadway, park system, and parkway system here in the Northland, but also extremely safe for our students. As it's been mentioned, there'll be a lot of student traffic on this road as it connects to Woodland and then on to Shoal Creek as students go to Staley High School. We have a lot of parent traffic as well that will use this going to Bell Prairie. As we were talking earlier though, there's auxiliary benefits to this because what this does, we think, is pull traffic off of 106th Street. So we don't have it in front of Newmark Middle School and in front of Fox Hill. So really, truly, this, this half mile section is going to have benefits beyond just the uh, students and the traffic that will be here and, and that really increases the safety and the opportunities we have to uh, to keep our students and our staff and our and our parents uh, in, in a safe situation and we're, we're just really thankful. Uh, we have the potential of growing the Northland in a tremendous uh, amount in the next 20 years and this type of uh, facility, this kind of structure, this kind of parkway is going to set the tone for the kind of development we have that I think we and our children and our grandchildren will all be very proud of. Taking a cue from Hollywood, the American Jazz Walk of Fame is coming to Kansas City's 18th and Vine Jazz District. The first big reveal will take place on August 23rd outside the Gem Theater. Bronze medallions will be permanently placed in the sidewalks. The first set will honor six jazz musicians. This year's honorees, a mix of jazz greats from both the past and the present, include Count Basie, Charlie Parker, Mary Lou Williams, Jay McShann, Pat Metheny, and Bobby Watson. Family representatives of the honorees will receive replicas of the medallions during a concert at the Gem Theater after the sidewalk ceremonies. This year's concert features the Count Basie Orchestra, Bobby Watson and the American Jazz Orchestra, and special guest R&B star Regina Bell. For more information, visit AmericanJazzWalkOfFame.com. Residents are invited to join the city and neighborhood leaders at a roundtable meeting on Thursday, August 28th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at the Southeast Community Center. The meeting will present information on land bank properties and the receivership program. Legal Aid of Western Missouri will also share tips on how neighborhood associations can prosecute negligent property owners. Phase 2 of the Swope Soccer Village opens in less than a month. Work is rapidly finishing on new facilities, which include five full-size artificial turf fields, plus new restrooms and concession facilities. The recent Phase 1 improvements allowed it to host the Big 12 Women's Soccer Championship. This state-of-the-art youth soccer facility will host NCAA Division 2 II and 3 soccer championships over the next four years. Swope Soccer Village is jointly funded by the city and Jackson County. Construction, maintenance, and operational support is provided by Soccer Village Properties, which is a subsidiary of Sporting KC. Sporting has used the complex as a training facility since 2007. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for The Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of The Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.